What's up y'all? Welcome to today's video. If you told me it was going to be 94 degrees in February in Texas, probably would have said you were crazy not too long ago, but today I am living out that reality. I am currently hiking to a spot I've never been to before to do something I don't do a whole lot of, but I think that's what's going to make this video good is I'm just going to wing it and hopefully show you guys how to successfully catch some white bass. Maybe some sandies. I don't know. If you know like all the differences, y'all might have to identify some fish for me today that I catch, but it appears that the white bass are running, y'all. So I'm gonna try to fish for some on one of these creeks off of a lake today. Um, there's, I guess, a chance I get heat stroke in February. It's so hot. I'm not hydrated. I'm running off of Coke Zero. Real good for the kidneys, but I'm hiking down to the spot and I will talk to y'all when we get there. Well, we're just going for a hike right now, y'all. I don't even know what to expect, but I'm really glad I brought the, the boots. It's very muddy back here. Okay, this, this looks promising. This looks like part of the creek that I was wanting to fish. But like I said, I don't really know anything about all this. Okay, cool. Looks like this pond over here on my right is a part of the lake. Okay. All right. Okay, so I brought some of my smaller gear with me today. Because uh, white bass, you know, they're smaller than regular bass. And the reason they're in these creeks is apparently because the shad are up in here right now. So you want to throw something that just mimics a little small shad. And you should be able to catch something. So I'm starting off with this micro crankbait. This is a micro recon from Guggen Squad. And it's a nice little natural kind of shad pattern. And uh, I really want to catch these fish on my BFS rod and reel setup. Might be harder uh, than it seems. Casting is close quarters back here. I tried to clear out a um, good casting area for me, but still probably gonna be a little tight, a little tough. And uh, I think we gotta just start slinging it around and seeing what we can get. I'll move down the bank, see if I can get right on the water, but it looks like I might slip if I don't watch it there we go I can cast across the creek it's good y'all it's crazy I'm doing this because like, I don't even know if they're in this creek or not I just hiked so much to get over here but look at that shad flicking right there it's a good sign oh I'm seeing a lot of shad flicking now hopefully those fish are in here Water's pretty dingy, so I might want to use something a little bit brighter to get their attention. I don't really know. I've also got a little spinning rod with me, so if I need to switch over to that, I can. You never know, like, all the fish are going to follow the shad, so there could be, like, a lot of crappie in here. Uh, bass you know could be bass could be catfish all kinds of stuff could be in here feeding on these little bait fish i'm assuming that when i see them flicking near the surface that means they're running from something trying to eat them and i'm seeing a lot of that oh big old carp so i've got a pink neon jig head on there i don't know what's gonna work it might not be this but it might be you never know
There's one. There's a fish. Uh, wow. Oh, ooh, that looks good. Okay. Okay. Hey. First whitey, y'all. Gotta be careful. I think that I've heard that they have sharp gills. What a fatty. Okay, on the pink and chartreuse. Wow. Big old white bass. This is the part that's kind of funny is that to measure, I literally have a tape measure. You gotta be 10 inches here in Texas. So let's see. Set it, set it at 10 and Oh yeah, he's good. He's like a 12. Let's go. We get to start the stringer. Okay, well that was like third. I don't know. That was that was really quick. On um Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Wow, that went right through him. Okay, first keeper of the day. Wow. You can keep 25 of these guys, but I don't know if I want that many. You know, I just kind of want some for dinner tonight. Me and my wife. But that is awesome. Okay. So, I actually have a slip bobber, bobber rig here, but um, kind of in, I don't know, I need to adjust it. My bobber's way up my line for some reason. Come on. Come on now. Well, let's get back out there. And, yeah. Okay, I was just kind of slowly reeling it along, letting that tail kick down there. And man, I mean, that, that bobber went down. That was awesome. First spot, first spot I just stopped to try this. Okay, well, I could probably pick up another one here, but it just, it's not, it's not happening. It ain't electric right here. So I think I've been hearing reports that the white bass are stacked up further into the creeks right now than I am. So I think we're gonna pick up our guy right here and head further down the creek, see if we can find a better bite. All right, y'all, we've got the first bend in the creek here. Uh, see a lot of surface flickering around. So might be some more bass stacked up here. We're up on a bit of a ledge here. So we're gonna do what we can to get our guy back in the water but he's not gonna have a ton of room to, to run down there. Okay, let's get out that crankbait. Just start covering some water. All right, I found this little curl tail grub. Put the jig head in there and I caught, I caught some on this last year, I think. So I'm gonna try it out, see how it does. If they ain't biting, I best keep moving. Whew. Okay, well, I just ended up hiking all the way back to where I started because the further I went down the creek, the less action I saw. So this spot where we caught that one actually had the most just like surface activity. So we're gonna fish here a little bit, see if it can produce a few more for us. Like I said, I don't need 25 white bass. I just want some to take home for dinner. So a few more would be nice. There's one. Feels like a nice one, y'all. Okay, good call coming back here. Let's see what we got here. That is a white bass. Good white bass, too. 
All right. Oh, oh, we came off. Okay. Fish number two secured. I think he's easily 10, but I'll go ahead and check that. Make sure we are legal. Okay. From here to here, well over 10. Very nice. All right, that was not too far into this journey. Pop him on the stringer. Got a nice thing going. All right, two on the stringer. Let's go. Kind of just steady retrieving this and giving it a little, little pop while I'm doing it. Whoa, what was that? I didn't see it, but I think the camera was pointing straight at it. <laughs> Whoa. These are a lot of sticks down there. I'm fishing this pretty close to the surface, but it feels like I'm getting bumped like constantly. Thank goodness I came back here and I caught another one because it was not looking good everywhere else I went. But this spot right here I'm standing at has produced two now. So hopefully I can get like five. I think that I'll probably keep everything I catch, but like if it's a real struggle still, probably just leave around five or four and uh, cook some up at the end of the video. That little white curly tail grub I think might be the ticket. We're gonna keep throwing it around. Really fun fight on the BFS. I'm having a good time, having a good time, hiking around, catching fish. It's nice. All right, y'all, I am back at my apartment. Um, the day didn't exactly go the way I thought it would. Big shadow on my head. Yeah, the day didn't exactly go the way that I thought it would, but we still caught two really nice fish, and I had no idea what I was doing out there. I just picked a spot on the creek. Second time I've ever tried to fish the white bass run, and I caught two really nice ones. So definitely. Maybe the only actual white bass I've ever caught, but definitely the two nicest. So I'm about to cook them up. Now I'm going to fry them the way that Caroline and I like to have them. And uh, I'm going to show y'all how I do that. So let's jump on the chesty and get cooking, y'all. All right, we got our two white bass right here. And I mean, golly, look, look at these things. Those are nice ones for me. I don't know. I'm sure y'all have caught absolute monsters, but those are nice ones for me. So I'm going to get one on here at a time and fillet them up. But I'm probably gonna skip ahead because I don't think YouTube likes this part. Okay, I've got clean fillets and then I gotta, I'm in the apartment, so I gotta put these fish heads in this bag, seal it up, throw them away. And then I immediately have to take this trash out once I'm done here. But in this bowl of cold water here, I've got nice clean fillets. I made sure they don't have any bones in them. So we don't have to worry about that. But look at that, good looking meat. Um, I've heard a lot of people like white bass, but they don't like it as much as they like crappie. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this turns out for us. Okay. Got the two main ingredients here. <laughs> okay, so we've got a large pot here. Um, and we're just gonna pour vegetable oil in here. I would probably do a little bit more than that. Um, honestly, I'm just out. It's the last bit I had. That's gonna be good enough. I'm just gonna have to watch them. Normally I want it deep enough to where uh, I can tell that they've like floated all the way to the surface when I fry them and that's how I know they're done, but this will work great for today. Hey. What's up? I'm frying fish. You caught fish. I did. Oh my gosh still have like burrs all over me from going through the woods these things have been stuck to me the whole time they hurt okay i personally like to just use like this these little tubberwares almost for like food prep and i need two of them with lids and then we need the secret ingredient frank's red high you all probably seen this recipe but it's my favorite because it's it's so easy and uh, it tastes really good so you just want enough franks in there to 
bind the fish. So I'm gonna get these fish out, kind of drip them off in the sink and then lay them on this paper towel. We're gonna pat them off. Come back in with some more paper towels and we're just gonna get those dry. You don't need that bowl anymore. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put all the fillets in there. I mean, when you're doing four, this is plenty. Uh, big enough to put them all in there. I might throw a little Franks on top. But I'm just gonna seal this and shake it up. Just wanna get them coated. I'm not trying to marinate them or season them really, but this is what's gonna bind that batter to our fish. It's gonna add a lot of flavor to it. It's really good. So I just wanna make sure they're all coated really nicely in there. Sorry, I realize I'm probably shaking this every time I do it. All right, that's probably good. So now get our second container and we're gonna come in with whatever fish fry batter you like. Um, I've got this seasoned fish fry, Louisiana fish fry. I mean, hey, gotta go back to the Louisiana roots. We know how to do it right. This is actually a pretty spicy um, batter, but it's mainly cornmeal. And I put too much in there for the first go, but that's fine. We'll probably do the fish a couple at a time. It coats better. You don't want to put all the fish in the breading one when you shake it up. And I forgot to get this hot. So I gotta let this heat up before I do anything else. I don't want to coat the breading quite yet. I want to get this hot and ready to go in the second I'm done with that. All right, I think the oil is getting hot enough. So I get a pinch of your breading and throw it in here and you see it sizzle like that like you know your fish would if you're frying it that means it's ready so we're gonna take this pop open our Frank's fish get the drops off kind of shake it off into there and then lay it down and then we'll do two at a time we'll do two at a time we'll lay him down okay and that top doesn't even match. Of course, I picked the one lid that doesn't go to like any of them. So now, you just get it, break it, get them covered up, get them coated. And it's going to make some really tasty fish, y'all. Okay, and I don't want to waste more dishes by just like pull these out and put them on a plate. I normally would do that if I want to fry them all at the same time, but small batch, we have an exception. So I'm gonna, gonna just look at this, shake off the excess and make sure everything's coated. This one looks good. And then I'm gonna drop it in and lay it away from me so it doesn't splash on me. Oh yeah, that's nice. Ooh, yes sir. Heck yeah, y'all. Now we repeat the process. That is a beautiful sight. Woo, we've been wanting fried fish, so this is gonna be awesome. Check this out, y'all gonna like these. I got some bass, largemouth bass tongs, baby. So I'm gonna kind of move these to the side. Those are the, uh, the issues with having such a shallow amount of oil that they don't freely float around in there. So shake this guy off, drop him in. Take this one off and drop him in. Got enough oil for all of them. And the more fish you put in there, the higher the oil rises and covers the top. <sighs> so while that's cooking, I get a plate and I give it a little paper towel blanket right there so that we can grab those fish right out of there when they're done. Put them down on that um, and it'll get some of that oil up off of there. It's better to put them on a rack uh, so they don't sit in the oil, but I kind of do this real quick and then we'll transfer them to another plate and eat them All right, they're ready to get out. Only issue is this pot being so Like tall it makes it really hard to get them out with the tongs alone. So Without breaking them that is Ooh, Hope it doesn't melt this Boom Boom Boom. Boom. 
Boom. Kind of pat some of the grease off the top. Another layer of paper towels. I love paper towels, y'all. Leave a comment, let me know how you like to cook your fish. Do you fry them? I mean, I feel like a lot of people fry them, but do you have any cool fried fish recipes? Maybe I need to try that out. I've been wanting to do some catfishing as well. I love fried fish, y'all. It's so good. And uh, I know there's all kinds of crazy things you can do with it. So leave some comments if you want to see me do something like that. <clears throat> okay, y'all, moment of truth. I've got the fish. It is ready. And I'm about to try it out. I've never had white bass before. So we'll break off a piece. Whoa. See that? That looks good to me. There's a bit of the meat right there. It's good looking meat. That's good. I mean, I don't know what I expected, but it's really good fish. Like it doesn't have really any bad flavor. It's very just like clean, flaky. Good meat, good crunch. That uh, the Franks really binds the uh, like a good layer of seasoning and uh, a good layer of the breading to it. Good crunch. Very hot though, man. Mmm. Mmm mmm mmm. I've been wanting some fish, y'all. I'm so excited, man. That is so good. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button for me. Make sure you leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way you can support me, support the channel, and help it grow. Um, and I appreciate everything y'all done for me so far. 10K is right around the corner. We're almost there, y'all. Keep it rolling. But I'm about to eat the rest of this. Thank you so much for watching. Catch y'all next one. Peace.